So the next conic we're going to look at is an ellipse. Now an ellipse is defined to be the set of all points in the plane whose distances from two fixed points in the plane have a constant sum. Those fixed points are called foci, and the line through that those foci are, is called the focus axis, focal axis or the major axis. The point on the major axis midway between the two foci is the center, and the points where the ellipse intersects its axis are called the vertices. So to just give you a sense of what what we mean by that definition there, um, imagine these are my two foci. Say that's F1 and that's F2. Then what we're basically saying is that there's a point on the ellipse. Let's call this distance D1 and that distance D2. Then distance 1 plus distance 2 is going to be the same as now I'm going to pick a new point on the ellipse, like right here. Let's call this distance 3 and that distance 4, right? Which would be the same as, let's just pick another one. Let's say this is distance 5 and this is distance 6, right? So the sum of the distances from the points on the ellipse to the foci as is, is constant. So we'll see how this can lead us to the equation of an ellipse in the xy plane. All right, so before we start deriving the equation, I just want to point out a couple of things. First is if I have uh, this ellipse centered at the origin, it's common to call either vertex these names, a0 and negative a0. Now the distance between the vertices, in other words 2a, has a name which is the semi-major axis. Not to be confused with the major axis which is the actual line, the line segment itself, but the semi-major axis counterintuitively is actually just a number, it's just 2a. And on the other hand, the covertices would often be labeled with b's, so 0b and 0 negative b. So this green segment is the minor axis, but its length, which is 2b, is called the semi-minor axis. So again, counterintuitive because it's they're not lines, they're numbers, but now we know what we're referring to when I when I use those terms. Now the other thing to notice is that if I put in the, ver the, the foci for this ellipse, and again the letter C is used frequently, then what I can actually do is I can find that constant sum. So again remember the, the ellipse is the, um, are all the points on the plane whose distances from these two foci has a, con have a, con has a constant sum. And so this distance here, again note that the vertex A0 is on the ellipse. This distance here can be expressed as A minus C. And this distance here can be expressed as A minus negative C, which is A plus C. So the sum of those two distances must be that constant sum. So that sum must be A minus C plus A plus C, which is 2A. So if you couple that with this idea, which is that the point 0b, the covertex, is also on the parabola, and I've just drawn an isosceles triangle. So this distance must be a, and this must be a, because the sum of those distances is 2a. This vertical distance must be b, and we know that this length is a c, and that's a right triangle. So now I've got a Pythagorean relation, which is that a squared, so I'll start at, equals b squared plus c squared. Now that relation turns out to be important if you're, you're going to do the follow-through for the derivation, derivation of the equation of this ellipse, which we're not going to do, we're just going to get started. Um, so that's why it's important. Um, in any case, let's just start the derivation of the equation of the ellipse. Let's say the, dif the distance between focus 1 and the point P is D1, and let's say the distance between focus 2 and the point P is D2. By the definition of an ellipse, we know that d1 plus d2 is going to be that constant sum, which we know at this point is 2a. 
Now d1, using the distance formula, is just x minus negative c, which would be x plus c squared, plus y squared, the difference, you know, the difference between the x-coordinate squared plus the dis difference between the y-coordinate squared. It's just the hypotenuse of the right triangle that you would make if you had to do it that way. d2 would be, using the same idea, um, x minus c squared plus y squared and we know that's supposed to be 2a. So um, this is a little bit of a mess if you have to deal with it but you know there's going to be two squaring uh, moves you're going to have to do and um, moving things around and then using that Pythagorean identity will eventually get you to this standard form for the equation of an ellipse. It's hard to believe it all just settles to this, but it does. So, uh, there's our standard form. Now, let's talk a little bit about orientation. Here are the two main orientations we'll be dealing with. Obviously, you could be rotating these matrices, or, or sorry, not matrices, these ellipse, ellipses, um, and make them diagonal, which we, we're not going to do. So we'll just deal with the, the two orientations here. We reserve the, the value A to always be half the length of the semi-major axis. So what that means is, um, in this case, the, in terms of the one that's situate, uh, centered at the origin, that means that the since the A squared is under the X squared, that implies that the semi-major axis is horizontal, and it goes, uh, in, its, in this case, on the X axis. So that would be an orientation that looks like this. Uh, on the other hand, if you swapped x and y to get the inverse relation, then it would look like this, y squared over a squared plus x squared over b squared is equal to 1. So in this case, I would have to label that point there 0 comma a whereas in this case that would be a comma 0 okay so a is always reserved for that that length um, uh, the the center of this the center of both of these ellipses uh, for now we'll just say is the origin so the center is at the origin and um, the foci would have coordinates plus or minus c0. Zero. And the vertices plus or minus a0. Whereas in this orientation, the center would still be at the origin. We will deal with shifts later. The, fo the foci, rather, would have coordinates 0 plus or minus c and the verti vertices would have coordinates 0, plus or minus a. All right. So these relationships we'll use uh, as we sort of solve some problems involving ellipses. Um, but uh, now at least you get the sense of where they come from. And the relationship between the description, uh, or the definition of it, and our algebraic equation that's going to let us graph them.